What did the distinctive Venus photos truly reveal, and why are they vital for our understanding of the second planet from the Sun? With NASA gearing up for its upcoming missions, a pertinent question persists. What undisclosed findings did the Soviet Venera probes unearth during the 1970s and 1980s? Have there been enigmatic clues that have eluded us until now, and what could be the repercussions if NASA detects signs of life? Welcome to Spaceverse, your cosmic gateway to the wonders of the universe. On this channel, we embark on an epic journey through the cosmos, exploring the mysteries of space, from distant galaxies to our own celestial neighborhood. Venus, an enigmatic and scorching celestial entity, has captivated and confounded scientists for many decades. Join us as we delve into the captivating past and future of Venus exploration. Let's start. The Enigma of the Russian Venera Program The motivation behind the Soviet Union's choice to focus on Venus, in contrast to other nations, remains an enigma that endures to this day. Some suggest that the nation invested substantial resources in Venus exploration to outpace the United States in the space race while others proposed that the Russians possessed extensive knowledge about potential life on the planet, but chose not to share it with the world. Determining the truth may remain an elusive quest. There is recurrent speculation that both Russia and the United States are withholding significant space-related information to maintain secrecy regarding cosmic activities. Nonetheless, let us for the moment adhere to the established facts. On March 5, 1982, the Soviet Venera 14 spacecraft accomplished a remarkable feat by successfully landing on the harsh terrain of our neighboring planet, Venus. It functioned for a mere 57 minutes before succumbing to the intense heat and toxic atmosphere of Venus. Nevertheless, this mission stands as one of the most triumphant endeavors in the annals of space exploration. The collection of color panoramic images, audio recordings and atmospheric data during its descent are deemed unparalleled. In essence, it can be likened to a miraculous achievement that a probe endured the harsh Venusian conditions for nearly an hour. Venera 14's success was not an isolated case among Venus probes. The Venera program constituted a comprehensive series of space missions initiated by the Soviet Union during the 1960s, 70s and 80s, with the primary objective of exploring our challenging celestial neighbor, Venus. Venus' proximity to Earth in terms of its position and orbit places it not significantly farther from us than Mars. While Mars lies in the direction of the outer planets, Venus is situated on the inner side closer to the Sun. Despite this positioning, Venus' extreme temperatures defy a logical scientific explanation. It is so unbearably hot on Venus that it surpasses even the scorching conditions of Mercury, which is the planet closest to the Sun. In the 1960s, Space experts and scientists begin contemplating which planet might one day be visited by humans. The United States initially set its sights on the Moon, with Mars being the subsequent target. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union turned its attention to Venus. Although it was evident that a human landing on Venus was highly implausible, Mars held potential for human stays, provided astronauts were equipped with suitable spacesuits and a reliable supply of oxygen. On Venus, however, the most advanced protective measures would rapidly prove inadequate. The design and construction of these Venus-bound probes represented a true engineering marvel. Russian engineers dedicated almost three decades to their development. Throughout this period, the nation continually launched probes toward Venus. The initial attempts missed their intended targets, and subsequent probes faced challenges such as crashes upon landing or malfunctions in their camera systems. Despite these adversities, the program ultimately achieved remarkable success, with eight missions successfully landing on Venus' surface and four of them capturing extraordinary photographs. While some scientific findings were openly shared with the global community by the then-Soviet Union, it is apparent that not all the knowledge garnered during the Venera missions was disclosed to the world by Russian researchers. The tensions between the Eastern and Western blocs were at their height, the formidable nature of Venus as a landing destination is primarily attributed to its extreme temperatures and the elevated atmospheric pressure. Even though information regarding Venus' climatic conditions had been available since the 1950s, the planet remained a profound enigma. This is primarily due to the fact that Venus is perpetually enshrouded in a dense layer of clouds, impervious to observation through telescopes. While Earth's surface can be readily observed from orbit, Venus' surface remained elusive due to this impenetrable cloud cover. Within Venus' atmosphere, 
temperatures soared to approximately 475 degrees Celsius, exceeding Earth's highest recorded air temperature by over sevenfold, and reaching temperatures that can instantly liquefy lead. Furthermore, at Venus surface, the thick cloud layer subjects the environment to air pressures over 80 times that of Earth, akin to the pressures found in Earth's oceans at depths exceeding 940 meters. When coupled with the extreme heat, this hostile setting would swiftly render a spacesuit ineffective. Nonetheless, the Venera lenders were ingeniously designed to endure these severe conditions for a limited time, just long enough to gather critical data and provide humanity with its initial glimpse of Venus' surface. To achieve this goal, Russian engineers devised a sophisticated protective shell which is most likely crafted from highly heat-resistant metals and other materials, akin to those employed in the modern-day Parker Solar Probe. The precise blueprints for these probes remain shrouded in secrecy held by either the Soviet Union or present-day Russia. What is clear is that the Venera 9 and 12 probes featured a spherical configuration housing an interior compartment designed to shield the electronic components from the atmospheric pressure and heat for as long as possible. Beneath the sphere, a shock-absorbing ring facilitated the landing process, while above the pressure sphere, there was a cylindrical antenna structure and a broad, dish-shaped structure that resembled an antenna but actually served as an aerobrake. Subsequently, the Venera 13 and 14 probes maintained a similar structural design but exhibited more advanced internal systems. Following the initial landing triumphs, Russian astronauts dared to install increasingly sensitive and costly scientific equipment within the probes. These instruments were tailored for the scientific examination of the surface and atmosphere after landing, incorporating cameras, a microphone, a drill, a surface sampler, as well as a seismometer. Additionally, instruments were integrated into the probes to record electrical discharges during their descent through Venus' atmosphere. At the heart of these instruments was the camera that is meticulously arranged with a telephotometer to adeptly channel light to the camera securely positioned within the lander. The earliest visual records of Venus, Venera 9 launched on June 8, 1975, marked the initial endeavor to capture images of Venus' surface. Regrettably, despite the spacecraft's successful landing, only one of the lens caps on its two cameras detached as intended. What was envisioned as a comprehensive 360-degree panoramic image around the lander materialized as a 180-degree photograph. Nonetheless, this event provided humanity with its inaugural glimpse of this otherworldly, searing terrain. The landscape is characterized by angular and partially weathered rocks, with many partially buried in the ground. The horizon can be discerned in the upper left and right corners imbued with an inexplicable sense of promise, as though something of significance awaits discovery. The white object at the photo's lower section belongs to the lander, and any distortion in the image can be attributed to the antiquated Venera imaging system. Venera 10 followed suit and reached Venus' surface on October 25, 1975. Unfortunately, it encountered a parallel issue with the lens caps, with only one separating correctly, resulting in a 180-degree panoramic picture. Scientists likened the lighting conditions to those of a cloudy summer day on Earth. In the photograph, Objects at the bottom are components of the spacecraft, while the terrain appears to be covered in flat rock slabs, reminiscent of volcanic regions on our own planet. Subsequently, in December 1978, Venera 11 and 12 executed landings on Venus, accumulating over an hour of invaluable data. Although efforts to obtain color images were initially unsuccessful, the recurring problem with the lens caps persisted in both missions, preventing the capture of photographs. Nevertheless, these missions yielded valuable information. Following the disappointing failure of the lens caps, engineers implemented a series of modifications to the design of Venera 13 and 14. These alterations resulted in the only probes to date that have successfully transmitted color images of the enigmatic Venusian terrain. Venera 13 made its historic descent to Venus on March 1, 1982. The lens caps were effectively jettisoned, and the cameras commenced capturing a panoramic view around the lander. The probe endured for 127 minutes before succumbing to the demanding Venusian conditions. Nevertheless, this duration proved sufficient to record the Venusian landscape in vibrant color. The resulting photograph depicted a surreal scene characterized by flat, dark, stratified rocks and finely grained soil, standing as the most exceptional image ever taken of Venus. Fast forward 40 years, merely four days later, on March 5, 1982, another probe, 
Venera 14, triumphantly landed in a distinct region of Venus. In this sector, the ground displayed more fragmented features with reduced granular material. The image captured the ejected lens cap and revealed a distant, hazy horizon. Each of these remarkable photographs offers a fleeting glimpse into this extraterrestrial world, portraying a yellow sky above a fractured, abandoned landscape that possesses an uncanny blend of foreignness and familiarity. Venus' unwelcoming environment precludes the possibility of terrestrial life. Yet there exists a notion that this world might have once resembled Earth, before undergoing catastrophic climate changes. Could Earth be on a similar trajectory? NASA's interest in exploring Venus had been relatively subdued for a significant period. As the last millennium drew to a close, this stemmed from the lack of compelling reasons to rival the significant discoveries made by Russian missions. Both the United States and Russia had fiscal constraints to contend with, making expansive programs like the Venera series unfeasible for both nations. Consequently, the primary focus was directed towards planets and moons where the potential for life or future colonization, such as Mars, which appeared more promising. However, a turning point emerged when U.S. researchers detected indications of a biomarker in Venus' atmosphere. This revelation sparked the possibility that Venus might host microorganisms. Simultaneously, speculations arose that the Venera missions might have unearthed evidence of life, but these purported findings were allegedly kept under wraps by Russian researchers. For NASA, these fresh revelations presented a compelling impetus to dispatch its probes to Venus. Once again, NASA's Da Vinci Plus mission is poised to delve into the origins, evolution, and contemporary state of Venus, spanning from its upper cloud layers to the surface. Commencing in 2029, the Da Vinci probe is slated to journey to Venus orbit, embarking on a quest to uncover signs of life and address inquiries regarding Venus' historical habitability. Presently, our own planet stands at the threshold of transformative shifts, according to certain climate scientist models. The looming specter of the greenhouse effect and its cascading repercussions might one day transform our currently lush, verdant and water-rich world into an inhospitable inferno. By gaining a deeper comprehension of these processes, we may equip ourselves to develop technologies that better safeguard our planet. The Da Vinci probe will also deploy a descent probe equipped with a camera. Should the mission triumph, this lander will mark NASA's pioneering venture onto the Venusian surface, signifying the first spacecraft to accomplish such a feat since the Venera probes. During its hour-long descent, the probe will amass a multitude of measurements and deliver fresh, close-up images of the Venusian terrain. Regrettably, the Da Vinci Plus Descent Pro lacks a panoramic camera, meaning that the older photographs from the Venera landers may continue to stand as the most detailed images of Venus for years to come. And that's it. Thank you for joining us on this celestial adventure through Spaceverse. If you enjoyed this cosmic exploration, don't forget to like this video and share it with fellow stargazers. For more mind-blowing content about the universe and beyond, subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss a captivating episode. Until our next cosmic rendezvous, see you.